The chemical oxygen demand, COD, is an empiric laboratory assay which indirectly measures the amount of total organic matter, biodegradable and non-biodegradable, contained in a water sample. In particular, COD measures the amount of oxygen consumed for the oxidation of total organic matter. Thus, it is measured in milligrams of oxygen equivalent per liter. COD is related to biochemical oxygen demand, BOD, another standard test for assaying the oxygen demanding strength of wastewaters. However, whereas VOD is a measure of the amount of oxygen that bacteria will consume while decomposing organic matter under aerobic conditions, COD does not differentiate between biologically available and inert organic matter and it is a measure of the total quantity of oxygen required to oxidize all organic material into carbon dioxide and water. In this way, the COD values of a water sample can be typically related to its BOD values in a more or less constant ratio. COD values are always greater than VOD values, but COD measurements can be made in a few hours while BOD measurements take at least five days. Since the COD test can be performed rapidly, it is often used as a rough approximation of the water's BOD. Even though the COD test measures some additional organic matter, such as cellulose, which is normally not oxidized by biological action. There exist different methods to measure COD. In all of them, a fixed volume with a known excess amount of an oxidant is added to the water sample being analyzed. The basis for the COD test is that nearly all organic compounds can be fully oxidized to carbon dioxide with a strong oxidizing agent under acidic conditions at high temperature. After a digestion step, the concentration of organic substances in the sample is calculated from a titrimetric or a spectrophotometric determination of the remaining oxidant. In this video, we will explain how to measure COD with the colorimetric method based on a spectrophotometric determination. The spectrophotometric method consists of adding a strong oxidant to the water sample under acidic conditions and using silver as a catalyst. The sample is then digested for two hours at 150 degrees Celsius and its determination is done by using a spectrophotometer. During the digestion, the sample's organic carbon material is oxidized with the exavalent dichromate ion found in potassium dichromate. The dichromate readily gives up oxygen to bond with carbon atoms to create carbon dioxide. The oxygen transaction from dichromate to carbon dioxide reduces the dichromate ion to the chromium ion. The amount of chromium ion is determined after oxidation is complete. In essence, a COD test determines the amount of carbon-based materials by measuring the amount of oxygen the sample will react with. Both chromium species are colored and absorb light or radiation in the visible region of the spectrum, but at different wavelengths. While the dichromate ion is visible at 420 nanometers, the chromium ion is at 600 to 620 nanometers, where dichromate has nearly zero absorbance. COD is quantified by colorimetric determination using a spectrophotometer at 600 nanometer which measures the absorbance of light by the sample and correlates it to a COD concentration value. The Beer-Lambert law affirms that for some substances, light attenuation or absorbance is proportional to the concentration of attenuating species in the water sample. In other words, if the value of absorbance is known, the concentration of the substance can be deduced. In particular, the spectrophotometer measures the amount of chromium ion produced during the digestion of the sample, which is correlated to the concentration of organic matter. To start with, a relation between absorbance and concentration is required 
in order to further determine COD values. That is the reason why a calibration curve is prepared. The calibration curve consists of preparing standard solutions with known COD concentration and determining their absorbance at a given wavelength. This allows us knowing the relation between COD value and absorbance. To achieve this calibration, calibration standards whose behavior is the same as that expected in the COD assay must be used. Considering a solution of potassium hydrogen ephthalate, the relation between COD value and concentration of this solution is Knowing this, a scheme of 5 to 7 dilutions of the solution are made in order to obtain enough points to fit the calibration curve. The standard dilutions should have the concentrations shown in this table, ranging 0 to 500 mg of oxygen per liter. These are obtained by diluting the initial potassium hydrogen ephthalate stock solution. Once that's done, the absorbance of all of standards is read in the spectrophotometer. And the equation fit, where Y is COD concentration and X absorbance. This method has a range of COD concentration from 0 to 1000 mg of oxygen per liter. If any water sample is out of range, it should be diluted. First of all, switch on the dry block heater in order to achieve 150 degrees Celsius on time while preparing the water samples for digestion. In order to zero out any light absorbed by anything in the solution other than the compound of interest, reference blanks are needed, which consist of the ionized water samples of 2.5 milliliters prepared in triplicate. Blend and mix the water samples before pouring any volume into digestion vessels so that suspended solids are not excluded from any aliquot. Prepare three replicates for each sample, so as to reduce error by eliminating outliers. Pour two and a half milliliters of water sample into a digestion vessel, in case it is not necessary to make any dilutions of sample. After that, incorporate the reagents into each digestion vessel. Since a very exothermic reaction will occur, it must be done in the fume hood. First of all, introduce 1.5 milliliters of digestion solution to each digestion vessel. Then, introduce 3.5 milliliters of sulfuric acid. It is important to follow this order while introducing reagents. Close tightly each cup tube and mix them completely. Place tubes in the dry block digester preheated at 150 degrees Celsius and set the timer for two hours. After that, remove the tubes from the dry block digester and let them cool down. Once samples are cool, color vessels can be observed. The darker the orange color, the greater the COD value and therefore the larger the amount of organic matter in the water sample. Sample must remain yellow or orange even after digestion. If a sample turns green, it means that the COD value is out of range and the sample should have been diluted, so the analysis must be repeated. Before measuring the absorbance of each tube, reaction vessels must be completely mixed. Now it is time to use the spectrophotometer. It has to be set at a wavelength of 600 nanometers. To zero out the spectrophotometer, we will first measure the absorbance of each blank. By definition, the absorbance of the reference blank is set at zero. Now proceed to measure the absorbance of each water sample and note down the absorbance value of each replicate. If a value is very distant from the average absorbance of the other replicates, this one should be discarded. The same procedure was used when taking absorbance values of the calibration curve. 
Once we have all absorbance values, we can use the calibration curve obtained at the beginning to calculate the COD of each sample. For example, for an absorbance of 194 milliabsorbance units, the COD concentration can be calculated with the calibration curve, where X is the value of measure absorbance in the spectrophotometer. In this case, it's 0 0.194. This gives a value for COD concentration of 511 mg of oxygen per liter. If any of the COD calculated values exceeds the method's range, a new replica should be done with a dilution of the sample. Thank you for your attention and hope to see you in the next video of this series.